Good morning. Thank you for your patience. Thanks for coming to this talk today as well. So I'm going to talk today about um, collection and reduction in the stream in the stream API. This is a talk about basically about Java 8. So the idea of it is if you've been using the stream API or if you haven't been using the stream API, but you aren't but either way, you aren't really very confident about the rather quite large um, subset of that API, which has to do with collectors, then this talk is meant to be for you. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on streams as a whole. I'm, not going, to, I'm, not, I'm going to assume mostly that we, know, that we know roughly what's going on there. And we're going to focus particularly on this one particular operation. It turns out that it's quite a large API. And it's actually worth delving into because you can do a lot with it. And I hope to, to show that during this, during this talk. So, um, so just, just who I am. Uh, if you've heard of me, then it's because I've written these books on a um, uh, couple of books on Java. And if you haven't, then that's not entirely surprising. I like to say the Java 5 book is the best book uh, in print, the best book at all, uh, uh, devoted to generics. I can say that without any fear of contradiction. That joke has lasted 10 years. It's obviously the only one. I couldn't, say, I couldn't be so certain otherwise. And then I wrote a book on Java 8. And, the book, and this book, which is really about streams, although it's got lambdas in the title, it's really much more about streams than about lambdas, is what this um, talk is based on. Um, so, uh, and, and then I'm, I'm a Java champion and I'm a Java 1 rock star and stuff like that. Um, so, the, so the agenda for today is I'm going to talk about why we want collectors and what that's about. That actually takes up quite a lot of the talk because I, th because I think having some background on what's going on is quite useful. And then I'm going to talk about the predefined collectors that are provided by the, uh, by the, the, by the framework. And then we'll probably take a break if I haven't used up all of my time with fiddling around with cables. Uh, and we'll take a five minute break and then we'll do some worked examples. And, and the idea that this is that uh, you're, going to, you're going to write the code for me. If, if I can manage to get IntelliJ up without uh, touching the cable, then we'll, we'll, then we'll do a bit of live coding in the second half and actually see some use of these collectors. And then finally, uh, there's, a, there's a very short section, maybe 10 or 15 minutes, just to round off the talk about how, you'd, how and why you would write your own collector. <clears throat> so the example domain for the talk is, uh, is uh, made as simple as possible. Uh, we just have a, a, a value object, a person, with three fields. Uh, a city, which I presume to be an enum, but we never actually, we never actually see it defined, and, and a string field and, and, and an int field. So the idea of that is to have uh, a couple of reference fields and, uh, and a primitive field, because that, that works differently, and that gives us some different problems. And the kind of code that we'll be seeing is really about as simple as it could reasonably be. We're going to be creating a new person, and we're going to, um, we're going to be making a list of person objects and then we're going to be seeing the different things that can happen if you use that as a source of a stream and essentially what we're going to be doing is operations on that and uh, on the streams that are produced that way and then we'll then we're going to collect them and we'll see what the collector is about so just to take a for a little while just to take a kind of higher level view what's going on what's going on in a stream well the life of a stream element is um is it begins at a, at a, at a, a splitterator. That, that's how it's born. So the idea of a splitterator is it's, it's a kind of cute name for something that can both iterate and split. And so it iterates if it's processing the stream sequentially because it feeds the elements of the stream, uh, in, it feeds the elements from its source into the stream one by one. So that's iteration as we know it. And, uh, and, and it, it can also do, under certain circumstances, it will, it will also split the, um, the, its source. Y imagine, say, an array or an array list. Uh, then you can see that, the, that you could process that more efficiently if you had parallel hardware by first breaking it down into, into, uh, into uh, sections, each of them being uh, suitable for uh, until you have uh, as many sections, essentially, as you have cores to execute on. So in this case, I'm imagining that we've got uh, a, a, an array list or an array, and it's, split into, it's been split twice into four, into four pieces because it's executing on four core hardware. All this is done automatically for you by the, by, the, by the stream API if you want it to happen. All you need to do if you want to, if you want to get the difference between a sequential stream, which, in which case the splitterator is just iterating, you just say, I want a stream. And if you want, to, and if you want 
a parallel stream, as we're going to see here, because each one of these yellow things is a pipeline, and, in, and essentially the different threads attached to each of the different cores is executing the, the code for the, for the stream pipeline on each one of the data sets, each one of those subsets. And, uh, and if you want that to happen, you would say, I want a parallel stream instead of saying I want a stream. And it's really as easy as that. Whether you'll actually make any real gains from doing that is a different matter because for, for, uh, to get a significant improvement in performance by going parallel, as we say, requires a, requires a number of conditions that, may not, that aren't met in many common cases. <clears throat> but it's, uh, so the, the, the idea of, the, uh, of, of uh, building parallelism in was, was that it should be explicit but unobtrusive. That was a slogan of the stream, of the stream designers. <clears throat> and, and, they, and they succeeded. It is, it, is it is explicit, it is unobtrusive, it's very easy to use, and probably too easy to use, because many people have been quite disappointed not, being f not having fully understood the situation in which you'll get benefits, they sometimes have been disappointed. So what happens is then the, 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 elements, come down these, the elements come down these different uh, pipelines, and then they're collected by a, by a terminal operation. So, these, so the three, the, so the three uh, uh, stages of the lifetime, lifetime of a stream element are the, the splitterator, where, where they're born, the intermediate operations, where they're transformed, and they're finally collected by a terminal operation. And we're going to, uh, and we're going to be concentrating on, on the collector. I should say, probably, that although, I've kind of, although in that little introduction I've not been very positive about parallel execution, the idea of parallel ex execution was still very important to the Stream API designers because th what they wanted was to make sure that the code that, you write, the code that you write for streams should be equally executable, either in parallel or sequentially. You may get very different performance, depending on, depending on your particular hardware setup and other things, but, the, but, the, but functionally it should work in exactly the same way. So this was a very important design motivation and sometimes you think there are things missing from the Stream API. Why, why can't I do this? And the answer is because you couldn't do it in parallel and if you can't do it in parallel then you can't do it at, you can't do it at all. In the, in, the, in the stream API. So I call, uh, in, in, the book that, um, in, in the book on lambdas, I call this parallel ready code. So you, even if your code isn't going to be executed in parallel, it should be ready to be executed in parallel. And they see that as the way forward for, uh, for collections processing in, in Java. Okay, so, the, so now I'm going to focus on the terminal operations a bit. There's three kinds of these, and I'm only going to go through two of them very briefly because I'm not interested in, I'm really interested in the third one very much. The search operations are, um, are things like all match and any match and find any and find first. So these, these, these terminal operations are the things that actually pull the data down the stream. Down, down the stream. So you could set a stream up by saying, I want, I, want, I want a stream, but until you actually say, until you actually provide a terminal operation and start the execution of that, nothing moves. So here what we're saying is we want to, uh, we want to get back uh, a Boolean corresponding to whether or not all of, all of the adults, all, sorry, all of the person objects in that, uh, in the, in that people list uh, have, uh, have an age field of greater than 21. <clears throat> and if they do, then that'll be true, and if not, that'll be false. Find any and find first work in something like the same way. They return an optional because they're looking for something that meets a condition and it might not be there, and it might be there. These things, these things are called short circuit operations, and they're quite important from the point of view of processing infinite streams, because uh, all of these search operations will stop when, they've, when, they're, when they're satisfied. So for example, in, in the case of uh, the, example, the example code there, if, if the, um, it, it could, you, could have a, you could have a really long list of, pe of person objects, and you could be processing them sequentially. And if the first one is not an adult, if the first one has an age of less than, uh, of, uh, less than 21, then processing will stop. So it doesn't need to process the whole stream in order, to, in order to evaluate the condition. So these short circuit operations are very useful. Without them, you actually couldn't do anything useful with infinite streams. <clears throat> The second kind of terminal operation are side effecting operations. Everyone loves these because they look like you know, what you're used to. So, you, so, you've got, so you've got for each, and everyone says, all right, okay, I, I really can do iteration here. So one of the points I'm gonna be making in this talk is you really can't do iteration any longer. You see for each, and you think, hey, I can do iteration. So, uh, so for example, uh, for each here takes a, a consumer, that's something that just takes a value and does, not, and, and does something with it, but doesn't return anything. 
And we've got here that we're going to print out each of the person objects, each of the person objects in the stream. So first question is, could we maybe use these, uh, use op these terminal operations, these uh, side effecting operations, uh, they're called side effecting operations because they do something to a, to a value that's outside of the stream. Uh, could we maybe do that by um, calculating uh, the, the total of the ages of the, of the person object in, in that list? Will that work? Pardon? Sequential or parallel, will it work? Well, Okay, that's, in, that's, that's, that's interesting. So the answer was, sequentially it will work, in parallel it won't work. Actually, that, that's sort of slightly off. Actually, this won't compile. Be, because because, because some, is, some is not final. But that's, a kind of, that's, a, that's a sort of trivial answer, because then you'll, say, you'll fold your arms and you'll say, ha, why did they put this stupid restriction on? For, some has to be final, or actually, as, as we now say, effectively final. So why did, they, why did they do that? Well, the reason why they did that was because of what I said a moment ago, which is that it should work properly in parallel. And you're kind of right that it won't work in parallel. It won't work in parallel because, not because, I mean, supposing we, we, we did some trick to get around the effectively final thing. We could make some into a field, or we could use the one element array trick or something like that. But even if you could write this, you wouldn't want to. And the reason you wouldn't want to is because some if, if, if you imagine it executing in parallel, this variable sum will be hot. It's going to have to be accessed by every single thread. Right? So every single thread will have to, um, uh, will, will have to um, get hold of it. And, well, and, and the reason why you're saying it won't work, I guess, is because it's not guarded here. You would have to synchronize on it. And that would be a tremendous overhead. That would just be really, that would completely remove the point of having parallel processing in the first place if you had to, if you had to synchronize on every access to some. So we really should not calculate uh, ages, uh, anything like this. It's not just, not just this particular example, but anything which, which uh, uses an accumulator effectively, we're going to have to, we're gonna have to um, uh, stop doing that. And the, and the argument of the stream designers was that not only sh we, shouldn't feel, we shouldn't feel bad about this, we should be pleased because we're going to find a better way of coding. So they had a quite an evangelistic attitude in the, in the design of the Stream API. It's a push towards functional programming, and, and you'll see, I hope, that, that, that it actually gets results. <clears throat> so, so, um, so we're going to use reduction instead. So now I get on to the, the, the kind of terminal operation I'm really interested in, which is reduction. So what's the difference between, uh, between reduction and, um, and use... And, why do we want it, I suppose, is, is the question here. So here I've, I've got um, the, the kind of code that you would imagine writing if you wanted to uh, calculate the, the total of the values in an array. And here I've got, a, here I've got an execution uh, graph of it. Um, just very, very roughly, you can see that what's going to happen is that the way that, this, the, the, that the execution of that uh, statement in blue there is going to involve repeated additions to the same variables. First of all, we get the value zero, we add one to it, then we get the value two, we add, we add that to the, to the value we've accumulated, and so on. <clears throat> and, that, and, and that, of course, is going to, be, is going to give this, this huge problem that I mentioned that, that we're going to be... Um, that, it, that with, without synchronization, it will be wrong, and with synchronization, it will be slow, and it's just really inelegant anyway. So if we want to avoid an accumulator, we can use, we, we, we can use a so-called reduce operation. The one I'm going to look at here is that there's two overloads of, um, of reduce for int streams, one of them which takes a binary operator on ints, and one of them which takes, uh, which, which takes a base value and a binary operator on ints. And we'll see the difference between them, but the one I'm going to look at is the first one now. So avoiding an accumulator, you, you, would write, you could write something like this. So here what we're doing is we are, uh, we're taking the, the, the values and we're putting them into a stream. Um, this is, instead of using a list here, I'm just using an array. And we're going to, and we're going to reduce them over, the, over this summation operation. What's that mean? The a, the, it means that we're going to, that that operation is going to take two ints and it's going to return the, the, the sum of them. So the execution graph will look, like the, will look like the thing on the right now. And you can see that, if, obviously, if you scaled it up, because this is trivially small, but if you had a, if you had a much larger array, you can see that you would, get, uh, you, would, you would get a big gain in terms of the focus on a single, on a single um, variable. <clears throat> so what's the condition needed for this to work? Well, 
the answer is that although that's one possible execution graph for, this, um, for, for that code, it's not the only possible one. So whether how the uh, splitterator works to divide, the, to divide up the, um, the array structure is something that you can't really know in advance, or you shouldn't have to know the detail. Rather, you should define an operation that is going to work with, however it gets split. And the condition for that to happen is that the, um, it, it's, it, for example, we might get, we might get this, rather, this, different, um, this different execution graph. That's also possible. Uh, and it's certainly possible uh, quite clearly if, you, if you're working with a, with a sequential stream. So the condition for it to, um, for the condition uh, that's required for this, for reduce to work, is that the uh, binary operator must be associative. Associative means that, it, that A plus B plus C has got to be the same as a, a plus B plus C. In other words, it doesn't matter how we group things. The order is still important. We're not talking about, uh, about things that op operations that are reversible or commutative, but we are talking about, we're talking about uh, the, the way that we group operands to the, to the operation that we supply to reduce has got to be, uh, has got not to, not to matter. <clears throat> So you can see that if we scale this up now, we, 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 get a, we get a better picture. Supposing we wanted to add together a lot, a lot of different things, then you can see that here you've got, supposing we're imagining that this has two threads, this is executing on two threads, and, the, and they can proceed independently until at the end they're going to have to, they're going to have to be, uh, the results are going to have to be joined together. Now, you might think, well, this is a huge overhead and a lot of waste of time for just for doing addition. And you'd be quite right. So, re so there's no way that reduction is actually going to win over, um, over using an accumulator in terms of efficiency for, for simply for addition. But if you, uh, if you have intermediate operations which are, which are more than just addition, remember that, remember that what we've got here essentially is, the, is a pipeline. I mean, I've just simplified it down to this very simple... Um, to, the, to this very simple case. But if you had a pipeline which was computationally heavy, and this is the important thing, computationally expensive, then in that case, distributing that out over different cores and allowing them to proceed independently in their processing could get you a big gain. So, you, so for example, if you're doing cryptography calculations or if you're writing a chess program or some other thing that's going to require a lot of heavy computation, then making the maximum use of your parallel cores and nearly all machines now do have parallel cores. All server machines certainly do. That's going to be uh, that's going to give you a, that's going to give you a big gain. And that's the that's the kind of the, the underlying architectural motivation towards towards um, towards this kind of thing. Okay, so so that's how, how reduction works on primitives. That's uh, the, a very simple case. And reduction works on immutable values too, reference values as well. So, um, and it's defined in the API. So uh, I've shown, I showed you reduce defined on int streams, and now I'm gonna show you reduce defined on streams. You know, we've got the four, these four different kinds of streams. The, uh, the primitive ones, int double and long, and then we've got reference streams. So th they did define reduction on reference streams, and you can see that it, that it can sort of work. So there are not very many immutable, val immutable reference types in the platform API, but uh, one of them is big decimal. You can't, you can't actually alter one of those. And, uh, and so, for example, if you want to add up a, a, a list of uh, big decimal, then, or an array of big decimal, then you can reduce, then you can reduce them in that kind of way. <coughs> but what about, so that's immutable values, but what about collections? Collections are not immutable. Well, how can we, can we reduce, um, uh, can, we, can we use reduction with collections? The API gives you to understand that because after all, they've defined a reduce operation on reference, on reference values, so it looks like it ought to work. And in fact, the truth is that they didn't, that they, there was a lot of time pressure on the definition of the, of, of the stream framework. And this was something which, if they'd have had more time to consider, might well not, might well not have slipped through. Not because, it isn't, not because it's completely useless. As I showed you in the big decimal example, you can use it, but because it's very misleading. And, and a lot of people have fallen down, down, a, down, down a trap in this case. Well, there is one way in which you could make reduction to collections work. And the, 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 that way is kind of pretty horrible. You could um, take each element of, a, 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 of your stream and you could uh, and in the client code, you could create a new empty collection, and then you could submit the, and then you could submit those collections to the um, to the uh, to, for reduction. 
and the reduction operation would be add all. So that, that add all merges, merges two collections together. It's, it's possible to do that, and I will show you an example at the very end of, of doing it, but it's not, not something you would ever want to do in practice. It's really, it's really, it's really pretty grim. Uh, it's, it's, extremely it's going to be extremely inefficient because you're going to have to create lots and lots of extra objects. And you're going to have to use add all, which is typically all the time, which is typically much more inefficient than the add operation on collections. And basically, it's horrible. Right, so we can do better. <clears throat> Um, so, uh, reduction over an identity. Why am I talking about that now? Um, oh, right. So, I just wanted to say, that's right, before I go on to talk about, about collections, I just want to look at the, over, at the other overload. I've talked about the, about the reduction uh, um, method that takes a single operator. Well, what about the one which takes a, a base value and, uh, and an operator? So th that's going to be important for what, we for what we talk about next. And we've got those both for, uh, both for primitive streams, as, with the, as in the top, and for reference streams, as, as, in, the, as in the lower um, example there. And you can see an example here where, um, in the code, I'm calculating the sum there of, uh, of an array of big decimal. And the way that I'm doing it is by reducing over big decimal zero as the, as the base value. And then, and then each... Um, and, and then each successive operation will be, um, will, will, will be add. And now that works, and it, that works in, in a particularly useful way because it means you don't have to uh, return an optional. You know that even if the stream is empty, we had an optional in the past, in, in, in the previous example, from the, from the other overload, you can see optional int and optional of t on the slide. But for this one, you don't need to have an optional because even if the stream is empty, you know that you, you know there's going to be at least one value. One value is going to come back because you because you've got big decimal zero to start off with. <clears throat> so this so this works so this works for, for immutable objects. Fine and and um, this is what it looks like. Reduction over an identity looks like this now. So we've got our, we've got our two, two the two halves of the potentially much more than two, but the two halves of the array here, and, we, and each thread is what it's going to do, operating on a separate core, it's going to start off, in the case of, uh, in the case of um, our big decimal here, it's going to start off with the zero, and then it's going to add the value sequentially when it's finished doing that bit, when it's, do when it's finished doing that, and when all the threads are finished doing that, they can merge the results together. <coughs> Will this work with collections? Well, reduction over an identity doesn't work with collections at all. Right. Why not? No, not immutable. But I only. But I, but I was the one who said that this should only work with immutable. If you try to do reduction over collections, you'll not get a compile error or anything. You'll not get, and you'll not get an execution error. Um, there'll be no. It won't throw an exception or anything like that. But you'll just get the wrong answer. Well, supposing supposing I provide supposing I provide it. So the question so the question is, um, is it non-deterministic because I don't have a starting value? But supposing I, I provided an empty collection, same way as I provided a, a, a big decimal zero there, an empty collection for the starting point. I think it's ordering matters. So if you have an order, it's going to run the uh, function. Does ordering matter? Uh, ordering ordering will influence the result. Yes, absolutely. But it's not actually the, it's not the key. So, so depending on what, on what order the, the, the threads execute, you will get different results you, in a quite an unpredictable way. I touched the cable. Oh, no, I touched the cable. We're done. Oh. Well, at least, at least I've got a discussion point anyway to, to go on with while I do this. All right. It was just the merest brush. Uh, so the problem is with the, um, the, the <laughs> right. this, this, is a, this is a real example of um, multiprocessing, isn't it? Uh, can, I, can I do this? Um, so the, 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 re the reason why it won't work is because the assumption behind reduction is that the, uh, is, is that the, base, val the base value is, that the, the assumption is that the base value is immutable. <laughs> I have to tread really carefully. <laughs> it's a game, isn't it? 
the, the assumption is that the, the base, that the base value is immutable. So, so, so that, that, that point about immutability is really important. So basically, each thread is going to try to use the same, uh, the, the same base value for its... Um, it's going to try to use the same base value for, uh, for its computation. So what will happen is, if you say, I'm going to, if you offer it, uh, if you offer it a, a, um, an empty collection, if you say the empty collection is to be the start of this reduction, then every thread will take that same collection as the start of the reduction. And it will be empty to start off with, but when the second thread comes along, it won't be empty any longer, but the second thread won't know that. So, so the threads will get quite confused and they'll, get, they'll make uh, concurrent access to that collection. So it won't work. It won't work. It doesn't matter. Well, it probably will work. Let me think of it. Let me think for a moment. Will it work on a, on a single thread? It, it doesn't. Yeah. It probably it probably will work on a single thread if you're lucky. But uh, the, no, but absolutely the way that the the way that the API is specified is it says absolutely you are not guaranteed to have it work. You're not guaranteed. So at some point in the future, when somebody says, ah, this program looks like it might run better on parallel hardware, your program will break. I mean, you, your program is absolutely not thread safe, and it will take very little change in how, it, in, in how it's, even in how it's deployed, possibly, in the future. It's deployed onto different hardware, and it might break. So, you, so, it, so it, it's, not, it's, not, it's not the road to go down. We've got to do better than that. And so the answer to this is, the answer to this is collectors. And the idea here is that instead of supplying an identity, a base value, we supply a function. So the function is executed by each thread, and it produces a new, fresh, empty collection on each occasion. So, so it's a, in, in this case, it's a lambda. Of the, I'm imagining it for, the, for this particular uh, collector code, whatever it is. It's a lambda which takes no arguments. It's a supplier. In the, in, in the language of the, of the stream API, it's, uh, the Lambda function API. Uh, it's, a, it's a supplier which takes no arguments and returns something, in this case, an empty, an empty collection. And if each thread calls that when it, when it uh, starts work, then each one is obviously going to get its own separate new fresh thread, <coughs> the new fresh collection. So there is a reduce overload that looks like this, but it uses an identity and not a supplier. It's very similar, but it's just a warning to you that if you ever, if you ever are trying to do reduction over, over, over a stream, don't, and, and you're trying to reduce onto uh, mutable values, it, the reduction doesn't work. And that's really the reason why the API should maybe have a warning in it or something like that. But hey, we don't do that. We're, Java guys, and we don't put warnings in the API documentation, but we really, but we really should in this case. So that's so. So, th so this is the answer. Now we've got these things. Now we uh, th we've seen the components of a collector here. We've got the supplier in blue. We've got an accumulator, which um, which so called, which adds in individual elements to, uh, to to a, to a container. And then we've got we've got the, the, at, the at the end when we when we the each thread has calculated all the values it's going to calculate the results have to be joined together in something called a combiner, so that and that is what that is what we're, what we're looking at. So to define a, a collector, you need to provide all these three things: a supplier, an accumulator, and a combiner. And that makes it sound like it's going to be really hard. And already you're sort of thinking this is too much for me. But don't think that because um, I've kind of I've sort of broken a rule really here. I mean, it was a rule that. Um, that Brian Getz was very emphatic when I was writing the book. He said, don't tell people about this stuff, he said, because he was very concerned that it would look hard. And he said, I want, I want them to understand it's really very easy. We don't actually have to uh, define collectors of our own very often at all. There's a vast array of, a vast number of, uh, of collectors that are given to us by factory methods in the collectors class. And th those are what I'm going to spend most of today talking about because they're really useful and they save you from having to do this work nearly all the time. I'm, I will talk at the end about writing your own collector, but it's not something you have to do, you have to do very often. Okay, so, um, so that's the, the basic motivation behind, the, b behind what's going on with collectors. And now I'm going to talk about, a bit about using the predefined collectors. The, this is really kind of the, the, um, the heart of the talk in a way, apart from the practical work that we're going to do. This is, this is the heart of the, the, the information. So the collectors API is, um, uh, provides f these factory methods in the collectors class. They produce standalone collectors, and I'm going to 
the, not all the collectors are standalone. Some of them are only for use as downstream collectors, and I'll explain that in a, in a, in a little while. But in the first place, let's look at these things that are standalone collectors because they're easier to understand. Um, they are, uh, and they're, uh, I'm going to say they fall into three categories. Um, ones, that, uh, ones that will uh, collect into framework supplied containers, ones that will uh, collect into custom collections where you, where you supply the, the collection yourself, and think that something I'm, that I call classification maps, which are the ones that are actually most versatile and, and useful. So the, the predefined collectors are uh, kind of straightforward. They come from um, factory methods, well, from factory methods in the collectors class. These factory methods, I'm not going to be writing collectors.toList and collectors.toSet because it would make the slides unreadable. But any time you see, you see methods like this, this is, this is what they are. They come from, the, they come from that class. And the... Uh, and the, the uh, and sorry, the, 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 the top line, the top line of these, are these things which, will, which the frameworks provides the supplier. In the case of two lists, it, it, it will, it will um, currently, it will collect into, a, into an array list. Not guaranteed that it always will. No part of the specification, but that's what it does. And a hash set and a hash map. Again, not, not, uh, not defined. Joining is slightly different. Uh, what joining does is it, it kind of helpfully concatenates strings. So it does things like it concatenates strings with putting um, interspersing commas between them, if you want, or some other separator, uh, rather than you having to do this uh, clumsy thing that we always used to have to do of iterating over them and then taking the last separator off. So, so it, it does that, and it will allow you to specify a prefix and a suffix and so forth. So joining falls into this category. It's, this is why I talk about containers rather than collections, because the idea of a collector is collecting into something that will hold the result, really, rather than, rather than always a collection. It often is. And the, the, um, to map and to collection uh, are, uh, will allow you to specify your own kind of map, supposing you want a, a tree map or a linked hash map, say, or something like that, or supposing you want, uh, you're, you're um, collecting to a deck or some other, s some other thing that, I that implements the, um, an array deck, some other thing that implements the Java util uh, collection. So the user would so you would provide it, the supplier in that case. And then last of all, these things that produce classification maps. And we'll be looking a lot at those. <coughs> so I'm going to illustrate how these things work with, uh, with animations, which are kind of uh, start off looking a bit, uh, a bit uh, over simple. And you'll think I'm insulting your intelligence, but they do get a bit harder. Here's an example of what would happen if you wanted to collect uh, the, all the elements of the person stream into a, into a, into a set. So the, the, code, the code is at the bottom, collectors.toset. And, um, and the, it, my idea of the animation is, we, is the thing on the left is, is, is going to be a stream and the person objects will come along it. And, and, they, and what will be emitted at the right-hand side is whatever we're trying to get. So, so in this case, it's pretty simple. The, the collector um, creates, a, creates a hash set uh, object in, um, internally, and it, uh, and it puts each of the elements that come down the stream in, into, into, that, into that hash set object. And then when the stream is exhausted, at the end, when the, the, automatically it perceives that the stream is exhausted, and then, and then, the, set, then the set is emitted. So that's pretty straightforward. <clears throat> the, to, uh, and I won't insult your intelligence by showing you the same thing about to list because it's kind of obvious. But maybe uh, to map is slightly more interesting because to map takes um, takes two functions. Um, it uh, a, a function which is going to uh, provide the keys for the for the entries of the map and a function that's going to provide the values. So in this case, we we're, we're, we want a map from city. Uh, for uh, for all of the for all of the persons in in for all the person objects and people, we want a map that's going to um, uh, that's that's going to for each city give the correspond give you the name of a person of the person who lives there. So the way that works is like this. Uh, again, again, it's it's kind of it's kind of simple. Bill comes in. Bill lives in um, where does Bill live? He lives in London. So London becomes the 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 the. Um, the the, the key for that, for that entry, and, and Bill's name is surprisingly Bill, and so that becomes the value for that, for, for that entry. And now here comes uh, Amy, and Amy lives in uh, Athens, and her, and her name is also Amy. So, so in this way, we're building, we, we build a map up, and, uh, and in due course, the stream is exhausted, and that map comes out. We get a map from city to string. <coughs> 
because, because the key mapper produced, uh, took a person and gave a city, and the value mapper g- took a person and gave, gave, and gave a string. So that's, that, seems pretty, that seems pretty straightforward. <coughs> what happens, though, I mean, you can probably see an imi- uh, a snag coming up straight away. Uh, what happens if two people live in the same city? Pardon? You will, get a, you will indeed get a collision. So here's John, and J- now John has moved to Athens. What's going to happen there? Well, you can't have two, uh, two map entries with the, with the same key, obviously. So by default, what you'll get is an illegal state exception. You might not be bothered about that, because after all, you might actually have a data set where you actually knew that everybody was going to be in a, that all the keys were going to be distinct. But, it, but there's another overload which uh, allows for the possibility that, that, that this situation might arise and you might want to handle it. So this one takes, um, has the key mapper and the value mapper as before, but now it also wants a merge function. Uh, uh, the merge function takes two, um, two, values in the, two values in the value domain and does something with them and gives you back a value in the value domain. So in this case, uh, very simply, what I've done is I've taken the two, two, two strings and I've concatenated them together. Just to be just for, just for the simplicity of the example, and now you can see that th- if that code is executed and and and, um, and it turns out that Amy and, and John live in the same place, then here comes here comes John. Now we've got the same collision, and in this case, what happens since since we've got the since the lambda at the bottom, which takes the two string values and joins them together, that's what's going to be put in to the to the value of that entry in the case of that collision. So that's what's going to appear. So, uh, th- and I should say, the reason, the reason why, I, why, I, why I go through all of that is that when, when you first of all see the signatures, like at the top there, and they get, they, I mean, that's getting a bit complicated, and they get a lot more complicated. And if you're not used to this API, I know when I first met it, I was sort of, you know, there's a lot of angle brackets there. It really is. And, 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 there's a, and actually, in the, in the real API, there's quite a lot of question marks, which I've, ta- which I've uh, edited out of the slides to, for, for simplicity. So it's quite off-putting, and, and I think it's quite a good idea to just, you know, to maybe to, to get over to you that, that, that what's going on behind the scenes is actually really a lot more simple. So let's just... Yeah, right. So that's the framework. That's the one that does the framework supplied containers. Uh, and that's them. The custom collections is pretty, is pretty straightforward. There's, uh, there's a two-map uh, method here, which is going to, which is going to allow you to, to um, uh, collect to, to a custom map. I've, I've taken the example here of a, of a tree map. You notice that, the, that because of the, all the difficulties that we now encounter with overloading, overloading produces more, method overloading produces more and more difficulties as time goes by and, and the language is extended. So it gave a lot of problems with lambdas and method references. And so now the, it's the fashion in APIs to not define, um, to not define uh, two methods with the same number of arguments. So that, so that, for example, here, although you probably, you may well not want a merge function, you're still going to have to supply a merge function if you want to supply uh, a, a map um, supplier. Because, if, because the, if, if, if we left out the merge function, just allowed you to supply the, the map function only, we'd have two, me- two overloads, each with four arguments, and then um, method uh, overload resolution starts to become very difficult. So we're, so we're playing it the easy way now. So you have to supply a, a merge function. But of course, if you don't really want one, if you don't really want to, one, then you can just go back to the default, which is to throw an illegal state exception. So what about this map factory? Well, I, I haven't got a, an animation for this, but the idea is that basically it works in exactly the same way as, I, as, as, the, as the previous map example show did. But in this case, you are telling the, uh, the, the collector what to put as the container that it's collecting into. So you, so you, you give it, what it'll do is it will call the supplier that you provide. Uh, in this case, we supplied the, uh, the, 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 the supplier we gave was the, was the parameterless constructor of tree map. And so it will call that, get a tree map, and it will, and it will use that as the box that it's going to, uh, that it's going to collect into. <coughs> It does indeed. Sorry, the, so the question is: at the end, does it have to combine the multiple the multiple tree maps that it's created? Yes, absolutely. So it has to do a map merge at the end, and it has to do that in a thread safe way because tree map, of course, is not is not thread safe. So 
uh, the, one of the big bonuses of the, of the Stream API is that it allows you to use parallel streams and do parallel processing, collecting into um, collection, uh, containers that are not themselves thread safe. And it manages the thread safety for you. But obviously, there's a cost. And I mean, the cost is qu really quite high. For example, in merging tree maps, that's a really quite an expensive operation. But, but, it, but it's safe. It'll, it'll do that safely. That's defined. So, so there's, two kind of, there's the two methods for uh, collecting to custom containers. One of, them is the, one of them is for custom maps, because, of course, maps don't implement uh, the Java Util collection interface. But everything else does, so queues and sets and lists, all implement the, uh, the, the collection interface. And so the, so the method for, um, that uh, provides you with, uh, that will allow you to, to, to collect to a collection looks like this. That's a signature. But the, uh, but the, the uh, parametric type C is, um, is defined as being, it has to be, it has to be a, um, a, a subtype of collection. And, uh, and, and what that returns is a collector which will take, I should have, I should have said something about the, the arguments to the, the, the type arguments to the collector. The, the first one is the type that's being collected. The last one is the type that is being collected to. So, so I mean, typically for us, it would have been like person and list of person. And the one in the middle is an intermediate type which is used in, in, internally within the, uh, within the collector. Uh, it's, there's, a, there's an extra stage that I haven't told you about bef uh, that happens at the point in which the values are emitted. So it's, it's called a finisher. And once all the values have been collected together, something sometimes has to be done to them in order, to, uh, in, in order for them to be emitted. The simplest example that would immediately come to your mind is if you had a, uh, if you're using a string builder internally to build a string up, but you, actually what you wanted to return was a string. So the finisher there would, 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 do, would do that job. Usually, you don't have to worry about, the, about that middle type parameter, because unless you're writing your own collectors, it's not usually very important. So the reason I laid out the, 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 um, the method definition of to collection is because if you see that in the, uh, in the API documentation, if anybody still looks at API documentation, of course, I'm an old-fashioned person, um, then it looks pretty menacing. But actually, it, all fits, it, it, it does all fit together. Here's an example of, of using uh, to collection. Supposing we wanted to collect not to a tree map, but to a tree set. Well, a tree set is just a kind of set, and so it uh, implements the, um, the, the collection, Java Util collection interface. And here what we're doing is we're making a, a, a we're going to get an, uh, a set of sorted name, a set of names, but we want it to be sorted. We want it to be created sorted. If you put things into a tree set, then they'll be sorted on their natural order. In the, in the, usual, in, in the case of strings, that's their alphabetic order in the usual way of things. So, so this code will give you back uh, a, a, set of, a, set of, um, a set of the names of the person objects in, in, in people sorted by alphabetically. So that's the first two types, framework supplied containers and custom, and, and custom collections. And the third type is classification maps. So these, these are all created by, by grouping by, also by grouping by concurrent and, and partitioning by. But that's, that, that's not very important. Grouping by is really, really the one that matters. We've got three kinds. We've got simple, we've got ones that with downstream, or with downstream and a map factory. Let's have a look at these. So here's grouping by with a, with a classifier. So the idea of this is it'll make a classification mapping. It's sort of like to map, except that the values that are placed in the map are, are lists of elements, are lists of elements, I should say with a, with, a big, with a big L, one list corresponding to each classification key. So for example, if you use person.getCity as the, as, the, um, uh, as the classifier, then you would get a map from city to a list of person, and that would associate each, person, uh, that would associate each city with the, p the people that lived in that city. And the code, f the code for doing that would look like what you see at the bottom there. Uh, People.stream collect. Collectors grouping by, and that means that we're what we're going to do is we're going to apply that, that function uh, that method, person uh, get city. We're going to apply that to each person object as it comes through, and then we're going to uh, and we're going to use the result as a key, and we're going to take the we're going to take the person object and add it to a list of uh, list of persons that correspond to that. So here's a bit of um, here's how that's going to work um, in a. Um, in an animation. So we, we, Bill and John live in London and Amy lives in Athens now. They're moving about these people. Um, so
so Bill, uh, so Bill comes in. Bill lives in London, and so he gets put into a, he gets put into a list of person objects associated with London. And Amy comes in, and Amy goes to a, is added to a list of persons that, um, that are associated with Athens. And John comes in, and kind of obviously John is going to be added to the list that Bill is in. And now the stream is exhausted, and, the, and, we've got a, and we get out the map from city to, list, to, the, to the list of person. So that seems pretty straightforward and possibly quite useful. We'll see ways in which it's quite useful, um, but, it, but quite limited. So like, what if you didn't want to put them into a list every time? Supposing you want to do something more with them. Well, one of the things that I've said about the, um, that I haven't said about the great virtues of the Collectors API is that, is that it's very composable. So you can, uh, we're going to see how you can fit different collectors together and build up quite a complicated quite a complex and elaborate uh, processing pipeline um, just by fitting them together. So we'll see how that works. <clears throat> this, is, this, is the, this is the start of it. Supposing you wanted to, um, uh, supposing you wanted to, to make something other than a list. Maybe you wanted to make, it, maybe you wanted to make a set instead. Well, th there is this idea of a downstream collector. So a downstream collector is one which takes the values that have been, that have been emitted um, from, from a collector and it, within the same collector, it does some further work on them. So, so, you, so you get an, a further stage of, collect, of collection work. So, so, if you, so the overload of grouping by, which takes a classifier, and a downstream collector uses the classifier function to make a classification mapping into a container which is defined by a downstream collector. So another stage goes on. So, it's, so, so the values placed in the map are containers of the elements, and one container corresponds to each classification key. So, so, so for if we wanted to get a, sit a set of person rather than a list of person, we would, we would use, the, uh, we would use a, a downstream collector, to set. Remember, to set is a factory method of the collector's class, which, re which creates a collector for you. So, it's a, so there's, like, there's a collector embedded inside of this collector. Here's the, here's the diagram. You see this, the downstream collector is actually embedded inside of this, uh, this outer collector. And here's, and here's how it's going to work. Bill comes in and he goes and um, and he and he gets he gets put into not not the, not a list as before which was automatic which was the automatic default but into whatever into whatever container has been defined by the downstream collector and 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 in this case it's to set so you can see these are like little little versions of the to set collector that I started off with and then and and then so on with the, with the rest of them and Amy and and uh, and John. So actually, you might say, well, like, well, how does this relate to the um, to the uh, to the default one, which which uh, just clicks to a list? The answer is that it's exactly the same. the The default one is exactly is, is just the same as this, except instead of having a to set collector embedded within it, it's got a to list collector embedded within it. So it it, work, it works in just the same way. It's just they 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 obviously thought it was convenient for you to have. Uh, a, a default where you didn't have to think about where it was going to go. So that's how you. So that's how that works. <clears throat> and so, last of all, on these, um, so lastish on on on, uh, on this section, there's a uh, there's an, a collector which applies a function before the values are processed. And you might think, why would I want to do that? I mean, that doesn't sound like a very sensible thing to do because, after all, one of the, the, one of the most common operations, intermediate operations on streams, is a map operation, right? So if you, which applies a function to each value. So if, I could, so if I could apply a function to each value as it's coming down the stream, why would I want a collector which is going to do exactly the same thing? Right. So maybe, maybe, maybe you can think about why, why we would want that, given the, the, what I just talked about with the downstream collectors. Absolutely. You might need a map in a downstream collector, because what you might want to do is, after the first collection has taken place, you might then want to do some processing on the, on the elements that come out before you collect them again. And we'll see examples of this. It's, that's really quite a common thing you want to do. So supposing you want, for example, to, you're interested in a certain piece of information from a, from a, from a value. 
um, but you also want to have the whole value as well for later processing. So what you would do is you, you would do the classification on that, on that initial piece. You pass through your value and then you would extract whatever else you need for later on. So, that's, so it's actually pr pretty useful. I mean, if I, if I make it look like a, like a, if I put it in this kind of way, it looks pretty stupid because you could uh, get the same effect as this just by putting a map operation on the stream. So, uh, but, uh, but I did it this way for the animation because the animation is really complicated if, if, I do, if I do anything else. And then I'll show you, I'll show you a more realistic example. So here, so here th this is a mapping operator and it has the, the downstream collector is uh, to set by the look of it. So the, the mapping is uh, person get city and the downstream operator is, is, is to set. So what we're going to get here is, um, uh, is, is a set of, of the cities that people live in. Um, and obviously you could do the same thing by just, by just mapping person to city in the stream. But, but in the next example that I'll show you, then you couldn't, you couldn't get the same thing. So that's, so that's the animation example. But oh, something went wrong there. Mm, I had a, that's, ah, right, that's, that's, a, that's, a more sensible, that's a more sensible example. So, so here what we've got is um, probably not very sensible. Uh, we've got, we're, we're going to group people by the city, and then we're going to map the, um, uh, the names of the people uh, that that that, uh, that um, we're going to sorry we're going to map the, the per those person objects to the to their names and then we're going to collect them in a downstream collector which we'll be joining. So what we'll get then out of that is concatenation of the names of all the people that live in each city. So London will have uh, John and Bill or whatever it was concaten concatenated together. And there's a significant number of these convenience uh, of, of these of these various. Um, uh, collectors which correspond to other to, to operations on the on um, both on the uh, intermediate operations like mapping which corresponds to the map intermediate operation and a lot of um, and a lot of uh, factory um, collectors which correspond to terminal operations that you want to, that you want to incorporate into collectors later on so for example you could for, for an int stream you can count the number of elements on it well for a, for as a if you want a downstream collector that can do the same thing it's created by the counting factory method of the collectors class and same for max and min which are, which will give you max by and, and min by and these are these these methods do exactly the same thing but you can put them into uh, you can use them to create collectors that you can use you, you can use for downstream collectors um, so some average summary statistics. Summary statistics gives you the sum, the count, the minimum, the maximum, and the average. So that's a, that's a kind of useful object. And again, you can get that both ways. And even and even the reductions can be done like that. Okay. So so uh, last thing I want to talk about before before the break, because we're just coming up to the hour, is the concurrent collection. So. Um, concurrent thread safety, I've said thread safety is guaranteed by the framework, even for non-thread safe components. So, I mean, this, this, is, this is a big plus, because quite a lot of the time, you, if, you, if you're writing your code so that it's going to be parallel ready, then you don't know, in principle, you don't know whether it's going to be, uh, from now on, you don't know whether your code's going to be um, executed sequentially or in parallel. So it, since it's probably going to be executed sequentially for some time to come, it doesn't make much sense to start, write, start writing to concurrent collections, which have, a bigger over, which have a big overhead, just because they're thread safe. So you would want to use non-thread safe, non safe collections. You're going to carry on using hash set and hash map and all that kind of thing. So it's a big plus that the, content, that the framework says, I don't care whether you, whether, when that change ever takes place between sequential and parallel execution, you don't ha and you're not going to have to worry about it. I'll look after it. So I will look after thread safety, whether it's sequential or, 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 or whether it's parallel. This is, and this is actually really a, a kind of a, a big bonus. And in years to come, as the technology for parallelizing code becomes better, You'll really be grateful for this because, you, because increasingly you're just going to get the benefits of parallel execution for free, or not exactly for free, but really, really cheaply. All you have to do is change stream to parallel stream, and everything will still work perfectly. That's 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 quite a big plus. But in some cases, you actually know that you're um, that you that you're going to have to use a thread-safe container already, 
right from the start. So, you, so, so maybe you're, you're collecting into a um, you're collecting into a, a, a concurrent map, which is already being used by by other by other threads, and so it needs to manage its own thread safety. So in that case, your um, the the um, the, sort of the framework will still work fine if you use grouping by, for example, or to map. It will still work fine, but it will impose the overhead of thread safe execution onto your, onto your collection. And your collection is already thread safe, so now you're going to be paying for thread safety twice over, which seems like a kind of poor deal. And so, there, so grouping by and to map all have, these, um, all, all have these extra overloads that allow for, that allow for concurrency. Every overload of to map and grouping by has a dual to concurrent map and grouping by concurrent. And in, and in that way, the, you, you don't have to pay twice. If you already know that your collection is going to be thread safe, then you can, uh, then, then you can, take, it, then you can take advantage of that. OK, right, so we've reached 9.30. Fantastic timing, even considering the, the problems with the, the, the cable. Um, so, I'm, so I know it's quite a long time. It's a two hours is quite a long time to sit through somebody. Um, chattering at you. So, so I think a five minute comfort break is quite a good idea. Before we stop though, are there any questions on, on the first half? Yes? Right, so the question is, what, 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 how can you know where you are in the collection? Supposing, you've, supposing you've, um, you want to do something to every third element of the stream. If you start thinking about... So there are, kind of, there are ways in which you can do this, and, but mostly they involve actually attaching, the, att attaching an index value to the value before it starts down the stream. And if you, th and if you uh, think that sounds crude and you can't understand why the stream API doesn't offer that, think about trying to do this with a, a, with a collection with, that's being executed, in, that's being processed in parallel. Right? Supposing, supposing I've got a million element array and I want to chop it up into pieces. I, and, I, and now you tell me I, you want to know where in the total array each element occurs. You want to have some way of doing that. So there's a huge overhead in, 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 uh, in providing that. You'd have to provide the starting value. Actually, I'm going to do something quite like that in the, in the, in the, example, in the example at the end. Um, but you'll see that there's an overhead involved. And since it's not the thing that people most commonly want to do, and um, because it's difficult to do with parallel processing, they don't provide it out of the box. Yes? Sorry? Well, you could, I mean, you could run them through a filter. That's probably, that's, that's, the, that's the generic solution that the stream API, sorry, the question was how do you validate them? And the, the answer is the generic solution that, um, that the stream API offers is the filter is the filter operation. There really isn't anything else that um, that would allow you to. Um, yeah, that, that's it. I think. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I think that's the answer to your question. Yeah. So, so the question is, what if, what if you want to do things, what essentially want to do things twice with stream elements? And that's, that's quite a, basically that wasn't the design aim of the, of the stream designers. So you can't do most of those things. There are extensions to the stream libraries, and I'll see if I can find some references before the end, um, where people have ad actually added new libraries that, um, that, add on, that add on to this, that help you to do that. But it's not part of the, it's not part of the basic stream API. No. Okay, last one, and then we'll break.
This one. I'm I'm using a downstream I'm using a downstream collector. Um, I'm using a downstream collector here in exactly the same way as I used to list for the for the first example. This. Um, sorry. Uh, have, oh, have I? All oh, right. So, so yeah. There's, there's a typo. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you for pointing it out. Right. Five minute break. Please come back. <laughs> or if you don't, or if you don't want to come back, just hit the green button on the way out. <laughs> Jesus. Can the slide be available to us? Sorry? The slide? Can we get it downloaded from somewhere? Um, I'll put them on the slide share. Okay. Thank you. Uh, pardon. Could you give the talk on Java functional interfaces like one or two Java ones ago? No, I know. I've never done that one. Um, it might have been Stuart Marks who okay. would have done this no, one. Sure. I really like you. I really enjoy your presentations. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So, functional interfacing was really good too. I think I thought you were the same. Well, Stuart's very good too. <laughs> well, sorry, I should say Stuart is very good. Never mind too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look out for his talks, definitely. Of the uh, identity over the uh, deduction over the uh, identity. If we if we have yeah, uh, ten.
Ne evet. Is that better? Right, I think battery. Hello, oh, but that's working. Yeah. 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 No, I think it's okay. Right. Cool. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So you're going to have to do the work. I'll, I'll let's 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 have an example. So first example I'm going to choose is we're going to classify people by age because that's right, that's really simple. People by age. But after this. It's up to you. So how would we classify them by age? Well, we want to, we're going to want a map from integer to person, I guess. Integer to person, um, people by age, people by age equals, and I'll give you a clue, people.stream, because they're all going to start this way. Uh, okay. Well, come on. Uh, map, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you. So, uh, I'm not very good at this stuff. So I, I often actually, it's it's kind of not. It's a bit of a cop out, really, to get you to do the work, because you know, like, like you're then going to tell me where I go wrong. I hope. Thank you. Collect. Not. Uh, so maybe maybe dot dot collect. Um, grouping by sorry person double colon, colon get age right okay let's see if that works oh might be an idea to do something with the, with the output let's out people by age Okay, so we've got a map there from 33 to uh, a list containing Bill and Eric and 21 to Amy and 42 to John. Looks about right. Yeah, with the uh, data at the top. Cool. Okay. Right, so we need to choose something a bit harder. Maybe a bit harder. All right, I'll give you one more. Names by age. So that's going to be a map. Well, you should tell me, really. Integer to list of string. Uh, name is by age. Equals people dot stream. So if we want to downstream collector, then we've got grouping by, right? So, we, so what's going to be the classification? It's, it's person to get, get age again, isn't it? Sorry? Mapping. Okay, because, we're, because we want to do some more processing. Thank you. Mapping. Okay. Mm, right. Sorry? 
it's, it's not just a missing parenthesis, it's, still, it's complaining about something. So mapping wants to take, uh, oh right, yeah, no, there's no default. There's no default for mapping. We're going to have to say to list. That's better. Right. So why is there no default? Well, because um, it, they didn't think there was going to be a single common case for that. Right. So, so we got the names out. So that, that's the that's. It looks actually it looks remarkably like the uh, like the first one. But in the first case, sorry, I should have said. The first one, I, I, I kind of cheated. The two-string method of person um, prints the name of the person in inverted commas. So that's what you were getting. That's what you got the first line. The second line, you actually got their real name. Maybe I should, maybe I should, maybe I should have made the two-string method a bit more, um, a, a, a look a bit more obvious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that's, this is an example of why you want of why you want downstream collectors like mapping that are no use on their own because you because what you've done is what you want here is we want to get uh, we want to map from um, from uh, the the name sorry we want, we want to map from the age to the from one f from one property of a person to another property and you don't actually work, but you need to keep the person object as a whole. Uh, past the first, past the first classification, so that you can use it later on to extract the second one in the right place. I probably explained that really badly. Okay, let's. Um, any ideas? Okay, I'll have to. Um, right, so let's go. Let's have something a bit harder, because this is um, well, population by age. This, this, that's not too hard still. Population by age. So that's going to be a map from I mean I, I, I mean sorry yeah okay so that's not very clear uh, by po population by age I mean let's collect let's get a map from um, the each age to the number of people that have that age pun well, you might think that it's long. Yeah, that's right. Because well, we'll we'll see. I mean, I mean, if uh, I could leave it there, and then we'd get a really puzzling compile error. But <laughs> because because actually the stream the, the compilation errors from the, from streams are not that not always that easy. They're not that easy to construct. So actually, getting the type right helps. But it's going to be long because what we're going to need to because we we don't know how many of them there might be. Okay, population by age, and you'll see you'll see the you'll see the how we how we get that value equals people dot stream. Right, grouping by. Oh, collect. Sorry, I had a mutter. Person, age. Okay, and and you and you, and you want you want to just count them? Is that is that all there is? Yeah, it looks, looks like that's all there is. How do I count them? There's a counting const uh, collector, isn't there? Or a collect we, we talk about a, a counting collector, but actually it's a factory method called counting, which um, which produces, uh, which produces a collector that doesn't have a name. Okay, population by age. Right. Okay, let's just check that that's working. Okay, so we've got um, 33, we've got two people. Uh, 21, we've got one person. 42, we've got one person. <laughs> so I touched it. I touched it. Sorry, carry, sorry, carry on. Sorry. 
Certainly you could. So you, what you could do is you could provide, um, uh, you, you could actually do more than just average. I mean, you definitely could do that, but you could, um, you could uh, get in, um, you could use in summary statistics, which would, give you, which would give you that and a lot of other information as well. So summary statistics gives you, um, it gives you, <laughs> I, I really, I, I need a remote control. It. Um, summary statistic gives you uh, the count, the sum, the average minimum and max, minimum and maximum as well. But if you just wanted to get the, let, let's see, let's see what would happen if we just wanted to get the um, uh, the the average. Well, because that would be quite good, wouldn't it? So so. Um, well, at the moment, at the moment, let's, let's define that problem. Average age, average age by city, okay? Average age by city. Average age by city. Right. Okay, so that's going to be a map from. Um, oh. <laughs> city to double, I guess. Average. Age by city. Oh, right. No, not necessarily. I mean, the the reason that, the reason that we had long. The reason that we had long in the, uh, in, in the last example was because counting, the counting collector, uh, that's going to that's return long because it doesn't know how big the, how, uh, I mean, why should they write it for anything less than that when they, when they don't know what the, um, uh, when, they do, when, they, when they don't know what the values they're going to have are. Um, but if we know, I mean, like in this case, for example, we know the average age isn't going to be, um, it's, there's no point in having a big decimal for that. Um, might be on, right? Um, so, so, it, so in this case, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, we can, we can just, we can, we can settle for a double, or we could probably settle for something less, if, if we, if we, if we cared. Absolutely, you could use it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's a reference type. We can have streams of whatever reference type we like. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to collect. We're going to, we're, this, after all, this is a talk about collectors. Why would we do anything else? Grouping by, grouping by. Well, it looks like. I mean, a kind of first cut at this. What do you think? Yeah, person get city. I mean, that looks like that's going to work, doesn't it? Um, or, or some. It's going to be the start, rather, of of, of what we want to do. So. Um, Right, so now what we want to do is we want to, we want to get the total age of all the people. We want to get the total age of all the people in the, in, in the city and then, and then the count of them. Maybe that in summary statistics thing might be, might be a good idea, mightn't it? Sorry? Well, there, there is an average function on... The, I think, is there an average function on, on int stream? I don't know. Actually, that would, that's a really good question. Let's, let's just see. Averaging int. Is, is averaging int the name of the collector or is averaging int the name of the... Yeah, I think, I think, I think average is, the, is, the, is actually the name of the function on... Uh, let, me just, let me just see since I, since, since I, since I can't remember and, um, and it would be worthwhile knowing, wouldn't it? Int stream I... Okay, so we, uh, I dot um, uh, average. So it's average, right? Okay. Um, so w we need to we need to get the uh, what we need to do is to get the, the the ages into a stream and then to average that stream, right? That's what we need to do now. How are we going to do that? Right, averaging. Let's try that. Averaging, averaging int to int function. 
So it sounds good, doesn't it? Takes a takes a takes a T, and it's a map, and it takes a mapper. I like that. Okay, so what would be, what would we expect to put in there then? Person person don't get age. Person can't get age. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. So, is, does, that give, does that give us our answer? It seems to be saying that it does. This is why, this is why I like to do this uh, stuff interactively, because somebody generally knows a better answer than I do. Let's, let's have a look. London 33, Tulsa 42, and Athens 27. London, 40, London 33, well, uh, okay, Athens 27, Tulsa 42, looks good. Sorry? Sorry, I didn't catch that. Could you say that again? Well, because because we have no way of saying. I mean, like in this, like in this case, we're averaging the, we're averaging the age for each city. I mean, in general, I mean, for a real life problem, you're I mean, for a real life problem, and you're doing some data processing, you're going to expect to have more than one person per city. But but. Um, the, well, how much work, you, you, your idea is that we're doing too much work because sometimes there'll be cities with only one person or no people in them? Uh, if there's no people in them, then, then, there won't be, then there won't be any extra work. If there's, if there's one person, yes, there would, be some, there would be some work, yeah. But, you know, it's programming, so that, that happens. Cool, okay, that was, that's, a, that's a good problem. Um, any others? How are we doing for time? Oh, we still got a bit. We still got a bit of time. Another ten minutes, or so. Okay, let's have some. I'll I'll provide one then. Um, how about this? Cities. Oh. Cities with more than one with more than one in, inhabitant. Slightly different. Sorry? Yeah, I would need to put, I, I, I'm certainly going to need to have a filter in there. What, what's, what's, my what's the type I'm headed for here? Cities with more than one inhabitant. A list or a set of cities? Well, let's have a, let's have a set of cities. I'll call them populous cities. Though they're not actually, they don't actually have to be very populous for this, do they? <laughs> I'm more than one inhabitant. Um, okay, so... so we, uh, we're going to need to... We, we, can't do a we can't put a filter on straight away because we don't have the information that we need now. First of all, we're going to have to do a collection, aren't we? We're going to have to, we're going to, have to do a collector. Grouping by. So what are we going to... We're going to group by... Collect. Um, right. City. So then we're, then we're going to do counting. So now what do we have? We've got, um, so, what, so what we've got at this point is a map from person to the, um, so actually what's really quite useful is to, is to actually write out where you are at this point. So we've got a map from um, city to long. Right, so for each city I've got, I've got the, the um, for each city, for each city, I've got, I've got the, I've got a map which maps each city to the number of inhabitants in there. Sorry, 
I have to, you have to, do, I have to do another stream, but what, what am I going to stream now? This is something I haven't told you about. This is something you have to do quite often for these problems. I'm going to have to break this map down. I can't stream a map directly. I'm going to have to get the entry set off it, yeah. So now, so now what I've got is a, is, a, is a set of entries, each one of them associating a city with a long. So now I could do the filter thing that you want. Sorry? Okay, so, so, I've, got, so I've got an entry and, 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 and I want to check whether the, the value uh, okay, that will, that, that it'll, probably, it'll probably get this right when, when, we're, when, it'll, when, we've got the, when we've got it all written. If it doesn't, I can go back and I can, I can give an explicit type to the... What, what have I got wrong, sorry? Oh, yeah, good idea. Thank you. Oh, look, all the red's gone away. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Right, so, um, so, now we, so now we've got a set of, a, a set of the entries, we've got, we're, we've got a stream of the entries, and we've knocked out all the ones we don't want, so, all, so I think all we need to do now is just recover the, the names of the, the cities, is that right? Okay, so we want to... Oh, I shouldn't have done that. How, how are we going to get those out? We'll collect... Am I, what, what, what's going to be the collector here? Oh, right, sorry, well, I, do, I, do want, I do want to set, but, well, at the moment, what I've got is still the entries, right? I haven't, I haven't, actually, broken the, I haven't actually broken the city out of there. I'm going, to need to, I'm going to need to put a map in, aren't I? So I'm going to need to map from, uh, to um, map, map entry, uh, get, which of, the, which of them do I want? Is it? Is key, right, okay. And now I want to collect that to a set. How about that? Let's see if that works. Okay, it's so only Athens has more than one person in it. This is after the apocalypse, right? <laughs> Yeah, okay, so that, that worked, right. Okay, have we got time for one more? Yeah, we've got time for one more. Yeah. D the difference between map on the stream and mapping as, this, as a, it's, a, it's a factory method in the collector's class. So the difference between those is that map is an intermediate operation which is applied to every value as it comes down the stream, changes each value as it comes down the stream. If you want to do that once you're actually, uh, if you want a collector that is going to do that before it does its collection, in other words, if it's going to take an incoming stream and apply an operation to it, you need to, you need to have a different kind of collector. So you, or rather, you need to modify the collector. You need, you need to take your downstream collector and you say, I want something done before that. And mapping takes the downstream collector and the something that you want done before that and it puts them together to make a new collector. Okay, one more then. This, the, 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 they're, they're getting a bit harder. And by the way, there's a, we've got a hands-on lab tomorrow which... Um, which will stretch you really a bit further than a bit further than this. It's quite. It's really quite interesting. But um, it's a it's a hands-on lab for streams and lambdas, and it's really well. It's really well graded. It's Stuart Stuart Marks from Oracle has made that made that lab and co co cooperated with him a bit. But um, he's done a huge amount of work on it. So I strongly recommend that to you if it's not full up already. Right. So most popular age. Well, this one's this one's actually quite interesting. Yeah, it's even more difficult to get the, I mean, we probably don't have time to get the, the you, would just want, you would just want an int or an integer. I mean, we're really kind of, we're really um, taking a punt here on, on what we're going to get out. In fact, we'll see that that isn't right either. But we'll, let's see why.
Sorry? Well, the, 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 it's like if you've got 10 people that are 33 years old and, and 12 people that are 42 years old, 42 is the most popular age. You want a grouping by? Right, so now we've got in, in, the way that I, in the way that I like to write it, we've got a map from we've got a map from um, uh, age in, integer well integer to person so far, but, but obviously that's we're going to need to change that. Sorry. It's, it's, uh, it's, it, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's a, to, to, a, to a list of person. Yeah, thank you. So, so where, would, right, so would, I think counting sounds, counting sounds good because that's going to enable us to find the maximum, the maximum, isn't it? So, uh, so where's the counting? Where's the counting going to go here? We could put it in. We could put it in now, straight away. You don't think so? So, so if we would then get a map from integer to um, from integer to long, and that would be, and that's actually going to have the, the information that we need in there, isn't it? Because. Because, yeah, that's right, because it's actually going to have the count, it's going to have the age, and it's going to have the count for each one. So I like that. So I think if I just say counting now, right, then I think that, um, then I think that we're probably, oh, that was not what I meant to do. So, so what we need to do now, now we've got, now we've got, um, a map which has got, oh, it's now, sorry, I should change that now to from, being, from being list of person to being long. And now what we've got to do is we've got to analyse the entries in that map to sort of invert it, really. Because, yeah. well, max value. Um, I, I think, you know, I think there's a... There's a um, some kind of um, there's a max by function on I think on on streams is that right maybe ah no but it's got to be if we had a stream you got a max by and you provide a comparator and it's going to order the elements according to the according to the, and then you could just get the, the that would give you the one you wanted but we need to have a stream of these of these um, of these entries so I need to, so I need to so I need to put an entry set again right okay oh hang on. Ent oops dot entry set dot stream right and now that, that, that why isn't it why, it doesn't like that max ah it's, it's not called max by it's called max max by is the name of the function the method that the factory method that produces a um, uh, a collector that does it. So the comparator we want here is now they did some clever stuff in Java 8 and they gave us what we could do is we could obviously we could define a lambda which said given an entry um, the, the, the one the, the one I, the return the result of comparing the values which is what we're, which is what we're, in, what we're interested in here isn't it? Yeah but There is a method in map entry, so it's map entry dot comparing by value. Fantastic! That's the one we want, isn't it? Because we want to compare the to compare the councils, and it's gone again, isn't it? Now it's now it's now it's got to the point where I can't even touch the machine. That's going to make it difficult. Okay, so I think that's it. Is that right? I 
I am going to get an optional in. Yeah, I was waiting for that to come up as a compile error. So yeah, so I need to, I need actually to get the um, I need to get the the um, I do need to map I do need to map it, don't I? Um, uh, okay, so I want so, uh, but th what I've got now is what I've got now is an, is the entry, isn't it? So I so I want to do a um, get value, isn't it? Isn't it? Shouldn't it be get value? Um, yeah, it's not. It's not. Off, it's not offering me. Um, ah, because ah, the reason is. Look at look at why it's not offering me get. It's not offering me that because it knows that it knows it's going to return an optional. I mean, I knew it was going to return an optional. I didn't want to to um, to spoil your fun. Um, the reason it's going to return an optional is because what I'm doing is I'm trying to get the largest value out of a stream with the max method, but of course we don't know, we can't tell in advance that there's going to be anything in that stream. Right? So, uh, so, if, if, so the result of that, the, the, the consequence is that what we're, going to, what we're going to get back is an optional int. So, pardon? Sorry, say again? If I have two entries of the same maximum, this, this code isn't gonna, isn't, is going to just choose one of them. Absolutely. There is a more complicated version of this code, which we, don't have to, which we aren't going to have time to do, but that is in the book, which, um, which actually allows you to, to, get, to get back um, the, the full map or choose, the, or choose a set of the most, the, the, the most popular ones. Right. <clears throat> so, what do I need to do to this to this optional to get um, to, to to pull the the? So, where would I where would I map the where would I map the entry to the to the key? I'm going to have to do that. Oh, after 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 the max. I don't think so. Actually, I think I'd probably wouldn't I make my life easier if I. Um, Wouldn't I tell you what would make my life actually easier would be would be in fact instead of that I mean I could do that but what would actually make my life easier would be to map this to the get to get to get the value. Oh, do I need do, do I need do I need the key? Right, okay. It's I'm compa came, uh, comparing by value, but now I need the key, don't I? Map. Oops, so, so I'm going to say map um, entry. Uh, uh, Get key right. Right. Okay. So I want to say, or else, or else, um, or else minus one. Right. Oops. And and now that and now this is not going to be right because actually I'm surprised. Ah oh, no. Right. I, what I could have done was I could also have defined this as an optional int, which is which is what I was expected to do. Right. Let's see if that works. Uh, that didn't, oh, and po possibly printing it out would be a good idea. Thank you. It's a popular age. Let's see what happens. Cool. And the most popular age is, in fact, 32, 33 in our data. Right? So we've got two people with 33. What do you think? Doable? Guys at the front think it's doable. <laughs> you guys at the back, well, I know it's a big room, isn't it? Um, it takes a bit. Of, it takes. It takes a bit of getting your head around it, right? But it, but it is. But it, you can see that it is doable. I've made it look a bit easier than than you'll find it because you will get a lot of stupid compilation errors. They're not stupid. It's just right, really difficult to sort out, and you have to do some. You have to do some reasonably smart things to, uh, like, I mean, extract variable, for example, really helps a lot. Sometimes the compil er compilation errors are quite misleading. So you have, to, you have to kind of think your way through it a bit. But you can see that you're getting, we're getting quite a lot of, um, quite a lot of power, the quite complex functions out of doing, out of putting together pretty simple things. That, that idea of, you know, the Unix tool philosophy of, of putting simple things together to make bigger ones works pretty well here. And it's a lot of, a lot of, how it works is the composition of the of the different collectors, and to some extent as well the composition of the the composition of the intermediate operations into the streams. 
Okay, I'm going to go back to the slides now, um, for just to just to round things off because I think we're pretty much out of time, or we, we're, sure we're about to be out of time. Right. Still, uh, just I mean, not mirror. So I'm just going to I'm just going to show you very briefly some stuff about um, writing your own collector, and then we're done. Yeah. Okay, so question, why would you want to write your own collector? Well, the answer is the, the, often you don't. I mean, I think you've seen now, there's just a huge number of collectors in that. Uh, I mean, the real problem is actually understanding that fantastic variety of things there are in the collector's class, rather than, uh, rather than going off and writing your own. You really need to get your head around what's on offer before you start reinventing the wheel. <clears throat> but sometimes you might want to. For example, if you wanted to accumulate to a container that doesn't implement collection, the library doesn't off offer you much support for that. Or, in the case that we're going to look at now, supposing you wanted to share state between the values being collected. And that's, 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 that's what we're going to look at now, as an example. The, 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 that isn't offered by the, by the library ones either. So the problem I... The problem I I can't remember whether, I don't think I described it like this in the book, but never mind. Anyway, this is Oprah's problem. Uh, Oprah's problem is that uh, these are the 10 books that she chose as the best 10 books of the last decade. And now her problem is that she, uh, that I, I chose this illustration because I was looking for a set of books. And I thought, oh, right, she might have some problems here finding a book out of her collection. So I think we should, we should give her a hand with this. And the, and the idea is that of, uh, of how we're going to solve Oprah's problem is we're going to um, provide her a map from the, uh, from the name of the, bo from the book to its starting point on the shelf. Right? So, so, and we'll do that by calculating the cumulative thickness of all the, of all the books that precede it, because that's you know, the starting point of the shelf. It's obviously Eckhart Tolle, A New Earth, and that's at, that's, at, that's at the left-hand end of the shelf. And then 336 pages further on, she's going to find um, the Poisonwood Bible. Now, 336 pages, of course, she's not going to know the measurement of that, but we'll give her a conversion. We'll, we'll convert that into inches or millimetres or something so that, she can then find, so, so, so that she can find it. And so in this way, she'll, she'll, have a, she'll have a really easy way of finding all the books on her shelf of the, last, the best 10 in, in the last 10 years. You don't think there's anything strange about this at all, do you? <laughs> I got, a, spe I got a, a specific request from Oprah for this, for this code. So what she needs is a, uh, is, is a, is a map from the, from, the, from the book to, its cumulative, to the cumulative page count that precedes it on the shelf. So since New Earth is at the, is at the far left-hand side, the, the cumulative page count before that is zero, but it's got 336 pages in it, and so the cumulative page count before the Poisonwood Bible is 336. So the, the, we are going to, what we're going to do is we're going to construct, or the way I thought about this when I was, when I was building this up in the, for the book, uh, was that we're looking for a, a data structure that's going to hold this information. There's a kind of really obvious way of doing this, of course, using an accumulator. But we know that accumulators are out. You can't use accumulators with the, with the stream API. We've got to find a way of doing it that is going to, that is going to be um, parallel ready. So, so, the, so the idea is to find a data structure which, which we can see as provides a partial solution to the problem. And then we see how we can join together smaller bits of this data structure to make larger ones until eventually we have the whole thing. That's going to be, that's going to be the idea. Here's the, here's the data structure that we're, that we're looking at. The, the big square brackets um, surround a sequential data structure, which I made in, which I used, for which I used an array deck in the book. But actually, I think an array list would be fine. Uh, the, there's be a slight performance improvement with an array deck. And the idea is that we, you know we know we're going to need an accumulator and a combiner for the, um, uh, and for the, for the collector. And we're, of course, we're going to need a supplier. The supplier is obvious. It's a new array list or a new array deck, whatever we're going to use. But the, the accumulator is pretty straightforward, too. It takes a book, a new earth, and then what it does is it, um, it puts the title in there. It puts, the, um, it puts in the... the uh, the number of pages, and it puts in the cumulative displacement, but it doesn't know that yet, because that's what we're trying to find out. So that's going to be a zero to start off with. 
And then the, then the, the way the accumulator will work is uh, it t that a single thread accumulating the, the, the first few of these books will take a new earth, first of all. It'll make a data structure to contain it, and then it'll put it in, in, in this array deck or array list. And then, it's going to, then the accumulator will take another one, the Poisonwood Bible, and it will wrap that in the data structure. And, it will, and, and, and now it can actually say what the cumulative page count is in the right-hand cell there. It can say what that is because, you, it, because it's obviously just the... the the cumulative page count from the previous one plus the, uh, plus the page count from the previous one. So it adds those two together. And that's how the accumulator works. And now if we want to think how are we going to get the whole, um, the whole, the whole thing, and so imagine this is, this is a stand-in for the, for the sequential data structure which contains all of the books, you can see that this, th th this can be made up from two partial ones Suppose we have two partial data structures like this that have been constructed in the way that I showed you on the previous slide. The one on the left is the, is, uh, was, was built using an accumulator. The one on the right was built using an accumulator. Now we've got to combine them together. And the combination is pretty straightforward. What we do is we do the, the combiner just takes the, the cumulative page count of the rightmost element of the left-hand half plus the page count of the rightmost element of the left-hand half so you can see that those two red arrows, and that makes 976. That's the cumulative page count of the whole of the left-hand side, and then it just adds that to every element of the to every page count of the um, of, of the right-hand side in turn. So combining these two data structures doesn't doesn't involve you in having to have an accumulator at all. We've had no accumulator in building up this cumulative page count, which is which is what we wanted. And so that now what we would do is we would take this and we would, um, we would run it through a stream and we would, um, we would project, we would use a map function, <coughs> a map operation to uh, project out the, 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 the name of the book and, the, um, and, the, and, the, and the, page, the cumulative page count and then we would make a map out of that. So that's kind of, that's the principle of it, the full codes in the book. I wanted to, I wanted to, I mean, I think this is, it's, it's a useful example because it shows how something which just looks like it's got to be an accumulator actually turns out not, not to have to be an accumulator. We have just got our minds so welded into the iteration and accumulators that we don't see other ways of doing things even if they're actually pretty, pretty straightforward. So just to finish off, I mean, I, I did actually think about how you could do this using reduction. But I guess I could skip over this pretty easily. The, 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 the way that you could get the same thing using reduction is to take each one of the, the, the idea that I talked about earlier on. If you were used to reduction as a functional program and you said, hey, I don't need this collector's stuff. I'm just going to do it the, I'm going to do it the tried and tested way. You'd have to take each one of these, you'd have to take each one of these elements. You'd have to make a new, um, you'd have to make a new data structure out of it. You'd have to put that in a sequential um, you have to put that in the, in, in the sequential thing, just like when you're starting an accumulator off. And then you're going to have to run reduction over all of, over, over all of those. It's going to be really expensive and clumsy. And quite a lot of it will have to be done in client code. So it's really, it's, it, it's really not great. The collectors was an innovation. It's actually something different from, um, from what's been done before. It's the first time, I think, that reduction's been used in a really big way in a language that depends on mutation. Java is not a functional language. Functional language is, by and large, using immutable data structures. And, and Java is not a functional language, and it's not going to be one. So, so adapting this I the idea of, of, of reduction, this functional idea, adapting that into a mutable containers was actually really quite, a, it was quite a big breakthrough, I think. So it's, 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 it's pretty clever stuff. Okay, so <clears throat> that's, that's, the, that's the sales pitch. The, um, oh, now it's, uh, now, now just for something else, my machine is hung. Um, so I'm going to talk, I'll just talk very briefly as a, a wrap up while I'm waiting for it to wake up about, um, um, keynote not responding, cool. Uh, I'm going to, I'll just talk very briefly about um, um, performance. So uh, the performance of, of, uh, of, of, of collectors is generally depends a lot on, um, on the accumulator. The accumulator is going to be, if you, if you imagine a kind of 10,000 element array, then, uh, then, then the accumulator is going to be used an awful lot more than the combiner. The combiner will be used relatively, relatively little. Um, and uh, 
sorry, just, I'm, just finding my, I'm just finding my place again. Um, so so the, the, the performance of the accumulator is pretty critical, and that actually really is going, to be, is going to depend on the performance of the accumulator for the particular collection. So generally speaking, we'll be using add, the add method of different of, of collections for it. So, so that's... We're not really looking at anything very different from, from what we have with, uh, with um, iterative code. We're looking at improvements because a lot of the time the, the compiler can do better with, um, with stream code because it, the, 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 it uses a technique which is something like loop jamming in, in, in more ordinary uh, in, conventional in conventional code, conventional iterative code. And what it does is it, it can actually see and it combines loops together and it gets better, uh, um, it gets better optimizations out of that. Um, the, problem, the biggest problem I found in looking at performance of large, uh, of collectors on large data structures, I mean the, the kind of simplest thing is that um, the simplest thing to say is that map mer maps are more difficult, and particularly because they need to be resized. So resizing maps is, is expensive, and map merging, which has to be done for the, com for the combiner, is a very expensive operation. So resizing, so, so initially sizing your maps, if, you've got, if you're going to be putting a lot of data into a map, getting the initial size right is actually worth a lot. So that, 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 that's, a, that, that's a, a kind of useful tip. Okay, conclusion, collectors. Generalization of reduction, they actually are like reduction only better. They allow a functional style while you're continuing to work in a language which actually is not going to be a functional language. They com they're really well designed to be composed together so you can actually do pretty fancy things by simply by, by, by just chaining them together. Uh, I, I, I really kind of fell in love with them as you can see when I, was, when I, when I really understood them properly. And I, think, and I think I think they're really great. They take a bit of getting used to but then um, Anything that's worthwhile does. Okay, so that's, uh, that's my pitch for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.